And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're going to be trying to use our brain to come up with interesting words and phrases and things like that, but we're going to be doing it differently. Half the game, we're going to be trying to match everybody else. The other half of the game, we're trying to be unique and be the only person with a certain answer. We're looking at choice words here. It plays uh, two to eight players, it plays in about a half hour. It is a traditional party style game. Uh, let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Choice words comes with a big pad that people will be using to be draw, writing words and answers on, a timer, 200 match play cards, 200 scratch play cards. Uh, on your turn, it will be your turn even though everybody will be playing at once, on your turn you get to choose whether you're doing scratch play or match play. Well what's the difference? Let's show you. Let's say they click, they, they, they uh, say match play. Now in match play what you're trying to do is come up with a one word answer that fills the blanks of these three places. So there's no timer in match play. Everyone at the same time will be writing. So I'll say blind mice. I'll say uh, smoking pipe and jackknife. And once everybody's done we go around in a circle and that person will start with the first one and say okay blind I have mice. And anybody else that has mice will raise their hand and each of them will get points. So let's say um, three of us said mice, including me. I would get three points for mice. Uh, smoking pipe, let's say nobody said it. I didn't get anything. Jack, jackknife, let's say me and one other person got it. I'd get two points. So for this round, I'd have five points. That's match play. And then the person to the left of whoever chose the, the uh, type of card last round will choose this time, and let's say they choose Scratch Play. In this case, they're going to flip this card over, and then they're going to start the timer immediately. So, with Scratch Play, they would say Work, they'd flip the timer over, everybody has until this timer is done, and then they have to stop. And when everyone's finished, again, that person who chose the round would go first, and let's just say it was me, I'd say, Men at Work. And now, if anybody else has it, I scratch it out and I get no points because in this play, in the scratch play, you're trying to have unique answers. Working 9 to 5. Yep, somebody else had that. Nice work if you can get it. Nobody had that. It's good. Dirty work. Yep, someone had it. Work to death. Nope. Clockwork. Yep, somebody else had it. Now notice that this says worked. Now you can't just put worked or works, but you could say worked to death. As long as it's kind of has the phrase in there and it's part of a big phrase and it isn't just putting on an ED or an S or things like that, you can do that. Working for a living. No one had it. So I would get three points for this round, and everyone else would go around, and for the ones that they didn't also scratch off that were the same ones as mine, they would, they would add up their score too, and then it would be the next round. And here's some rules and guidelines where if it's boat, you could say speed boat or sailboat, but junky boat no or noisy boat is just too general, it's not really it. And then, you know, ice, you could say dry ice or thin ice, but not dice or mice, because that's just too cheap. And like this dirt, you couldn't say dirty, but you could say dirty shame and down and dirty and things like that. So those are some of the, the sort of the, the, the ways that you can play uh, certain forms of the word that make them good. I forgot to mention that if there's an objection as to something that somebody wrote and someone might not think it's, think it's a valid answer, if at least two people think it's not a valid answer, it's out. And you keep continue to play until you get a certain amount of points depending on however many players are playing. It's also a two-player variant where in scratch play, uh, answers are rejected by just one person instead of having more than one person say it. And then in match play, the person who draw the card gets to pick which one of these they're going to try to match. So they get to pick any of these three that they think is the strongest one. And if so, they get it right. Then the opponent gets to choose from the other two. If they get it right, then they're good. If they get it wrong, that same opponent gets to choose the, the, gets the other one. And if that one's right, they get it there. It's kind of like weighing it because they don't get the first choice. If they get one of the other two correct, they get it correct. And in this case, five points for each correct answer in match play. That's how you play choice words. All right, there you have choice words. Now, I was originally interested in this because I have a party game called Buzzword that myself and my family love a lot where there's a card and there's already predetermined things on that card and you read out a phrase and let's say the buzzword's apple and every phrase has like 10 phrases on there and they give you clues as to say uh, the nickname for New York, oh the big apple, things like that. But they're, they're predetermined phrases and we love that game. I was interested in this because this almost seems like buzzword but almost like reverse buzzword and so I was pretty interested in this. So how did, how did it play out towards the end? Well, 
So we've got two different sides of the spectrum here. I am a gamer, but I am a strategic gamer that does love lighter games as well, and I, and I do love party games. Um, I grew up playing them a lot with my family, but I'm still a gamer too. My family, on the other hand, loves light games, loves party games, but they don't get into anything higher than, I'd say, even light medium. Probably light or party games. So you really have two ends of the spectrum here. Me as a gamer and on the cutting edge of always trying to see the new stuff, I'm, I'm always interested in what is, what, what's new out there, especially for the party game genre. For example, some of the new twists on party games lately, like Concept that came out that was a Spiel des Jahres nominee, was quite a different concept haha, itself. Uh, Spyfall was quite a different twist on a party, party style game. But they don't always have to be brand new. Sometimes you can take an older game, put a spin on it, and it's still awesome, like Reverse Charades. Sounds so stupid and simple. Let's just take charades and have one person be the guesser and everybody else act it out. That simple twist actually kills charades because the reverse charades is so much more fun. So you don't always have to be doing something completely different. You can refine other things. Then you have some other things like this that I think is a traditional party game where it's things that you have maybe seen before. This is like match game meets buzzword reverse categories type of thing. So it's, there's nothing new here. But how does it play? Is it fun? So after playing with this a, a few times and, and talking to my family about it, here's where we stand on it. Me, I think it's, it's, it's an okay party game. If you don't play a lot of party games and you're just getting into it, or you're at like a mass market store and all they have is party games and Monopoly and things like that, if you get this game, you'll have fun with it, you'll have laughs, and you'll have a good time, and it will probably be worth the money. You'll probably play some party games in your life that are much better than this. You'll probably play some, many that are much worse than this. I'd say it's about middle of the road. It's not a bad thing for, I don't know how much it is at the mass market stores, but for 20, 25 bucks, you're gonna have some fun. Now for the people that are looking for something new and interesting, I don't think you're gonna find that here. One of the big positives of this is the replayability factor. Is even though there's, a, there's hundreds of cards in each, since it's a blank, you know, it's always gonna be different. Even if you get the same card later, you're dealing with different people and how do you match other people? So you're never gonna have that memorization of, of oh, we've already done this card, I already know all these. It's always gonna be different because you are coming up with different things. For example, one of these things said, one of the match games was blank stream. And one of my, my, my nephew said, live stream. Well, you know what? A few years ago, live stream wasn't even in anybody's like vocabulary, but now it is. So party game, uh, it's, it's, for me, it was okay. It was fun. I enjoyed it. it was, it's not the best thing I've ever played. It's not the worst thing I've ever played. For me, it's about an average party game. But at the end of the night, I asked my family. We played tons of games over the weekend. And I asked them how they liked this. And they all loved it. A lot more than I did. So if you're in that general audience, mass market games, you like just party games, you haven't gone too much deeper, you'll probably love this game. If you're looking for something a little bit new and edgy, it's not here, but you can still probably have some enjoyment out of it, but it's nothing new. That's choice words. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>